Welcome back to another reading and correcting with me, Kendar, the Tiger Knights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. These are where I read a chapter from one of my stories and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. And if you are looking to support me, that is on my Patreon. Today we are doing Chapter 9 of Trustless Shadows. I want to apologize for Major Wise's behavior, she says as she sits. Her voice doesn't have any of the exhaustion in it I remember from when, Amen from when Amanda had to deal with difficult people. I never told him to treat you this way. I'm Colonel Madeline Fallon. Dr. Gord, name you Derek. Do you prefer to be called something else? I shake my head. A man enters the room, carrying a keyboard. He's panting and smells of exertion. He looks at me nervously. His blonde hair is short and thin. This should indicate he's older, but his face is free of wrinkles. He's thin, wearing a shirt with pleated plants. Nothing about him matches the soldiers here. It'll take me a moment to set up, ma'am. He sits on our rights. It's all right, Harry. Just let me know when you're ready. The man nods and starts typing. The screens on the wall turn on and words appear. I'm, I match the speed of the letter. I match the speed the letter appear to the, the sound of his typing. Harry is my technical guy. There's literally can't do with computers. I understand the individual words, but the way they're strung together means nothing to me. Have you ever wondered how you can walk the streets without people running as far as they can from you? We know you've been continuing to fight demons since you've left Dr. Walker's facility. I say nothing, but in truth, I had been wondering that. How did Robert not know? How did anyone in the fighting arena not know? That would be Harry. We've been erasing the data as we come across it. Rest assured that your escapades are safe a safe secret with us. I can tell that she's trying to sound like she's on my side. Earning money would have been hard without her help, but this changes nothing. I'm not going to help you. She nods. Possibly. But before you decide, I think you need to hear what I have what else I have to say. It won't change anything. I'm ready, ma'am. Bring up the file. A face appears on the, on the left side of the screen, looking straight at the camera. It takes half the space, and on the right, the rest is filled with text. The face is, a ma is male, with a square jaw. It matches what Jason has described as rugged. He has short, pale brown hair, so short that it looks more like brush bristle than hair. His ruddy pink skin is striped with black. Even the hair is striped Even the hair is striped. This is your predecessor. Pre predecessor. I try to judge if she's lying. Amanda told me the three that came before died. He was the first of Dr. Walker's experiments. Like you, he came from the military. He was a colonel, highly decorated. Unlike you, he volunteered. Also unlike you, he retained his memories treatment left him with those black bands, scars of some sort. Dr. Walker wasn't able to work out what caused them. She nods, and the image is, the image is replaced with a picture of a man, the same man by the stripes on his arm and chest, fighting people dressed in the uniform I recognize as Amanda's support unit. It's in a large room, so training. He was active for five months before he began exhibiting changes, exhibiting signs his personality had been affected. The image changes again. The man was fighting a demon. Is. Is fighting a demon. During that time, he took down a dozen demons single-handedly. After that, he attacked the human battalion that was in charge of escorting him. Twenty men and women died before they had time to react. Sixteen more died and fifty-three were injured in the process of subduing him. The experiment was deemed a failure and Dr. Walker was ordered to destroy him. The next image shows demons, a lot of them. At least thirty standing around a single human. It takes me a moment to realize what looks wrong with the image. They aren't in the process of attacking him or each other to get to him. There's no indication of any of them are hungry. 
They look calm, watching him, captivated. The image zooms on the man, and now I make out the black stripes on his face. His hair is longer, and the pattern of stripes look different to me. This picture was taken six months ago, by a drone. As you can tell, he's quite alive. As far as we can tell, he is leading this band of demons. How is he doing that? Humans don't order demons around. Even when they lived, well, even when I lived the lie, Amanda had explained that some demons would take humans as agents. She said they were tainted, which was why they smelled like demons to me. That a demon had infected them, made them act more like they did. That was a lie. Humans will be violent of their own accord, but they do work with demons, for demons. But it is always the demon who is in charge. We've linked him to 16 group of demons like this one. Each of them was involved in a large-scale attack on his city over the last two years, but it wasn't until this picture that we were able to identify him. So Amanda lied to you also? Yes. The little I've been able to get her to admit indicates that she kept him hidden and restrained in the hope of fixing what went wrong. I don't know when he escaped, but I expect it was shortly before the first attack. Get Amanda to tell you. I'm sure you have ways to do that. Unfortunately, I can't. In spite of this, you and her, your predecessors were considered sufficiently stepped forward for her to garner allies within the military. They are, they are more interested in what she can continue to accomplish rather than the damage she caused by not destroying him. So she's still working. Yes, the damage you and your demon allies caused to her facility was a setback, but all her research was backed up, and she wasn't the only one collecting the condensed material that holds the demon's essence. A few months ago, she had everything running again, and immediately set to work bu building your successor. Then this happened. The image, the image changes. An aerial view of a city with the streets black from all the demons running through them. I realize it isn't a still image when I notice a car flipping over. I see demon, demons break from the crowd to hunt down fleeing humans. That was three days ago. The, image, the view changes. Armored vehicles are torn apart. Heavily armed soldiers ripped to pieces. The military forces that we had in place to take over from you were decimated in minutes. We don't know how he did it, but he, was, he, was, he has succeeded in uniting the demons. He's taken control of them, built an army, and has them, has them using our tactics against us. Should I care? I ask the question even though I have an urge to run out and go stop these demons. You were made to protect humans from this. In spite of the urge I feel, she's wrong. That was the lie, I was told. I was made so Amanda could find out how well I killed demon. She doesn't care about saving humans. All she wants is to see demons die. I indicate the screen. This isn't because of the demons. It's because humans are taking over their world, over the wild where demons live. No. Her voice is hard, filled with certainty. It's because of this man. The screen switches back to the still of the man's face. He's Amanda's creation. Hold her accountable. I plan on it once she's rescued. She motions to the man on the keyboard, and the image changes. The camera is high, moving closer to the ground in a controlled descent. descent, descent in a controlled descent. I, I stumble over them when I think too much about how the word is supposed to be pronounced. A building of glass and metal comes more, becomes more visible. I've seen many like it in my time traveling. Every city has buildings similar to this one. But I know this one intimately. Intimately. <sighs> intimately that that is where i was born where i lived where amanda and jason lied to me this was taken this morning demons crowd the street and alleys around the building the camera moves around it to the back the garage doors are ripped open and demons are pouring into the building the cameras move along the build ah jeez i that uh... Ah, the, the building, the building, the building. Okay, camera moves to the back. The garage doors are ripped open and demons are pouring, are pouring in. 
Uh, demons crowd the street and alleys around the building. The camera moves to the back. The garage doors are ripped open and demons are pouring in. The camera moves along the building down the, the narrow alley where Juliet rescued me. There too, the door is ripped out as are the others along the wall, along that wall. A demon drags a human out of the building, throws her to the ground and roars. The human backs up, scrambles to her feet and runs off. The demon waits a moment and chases her. The camera turns to the corner, turns the corner and I'm looking at the front of the building. The glass facade is shattered. Then demons are coming and going as they please. Across the street, demons are moving and gesticulating around the street lamps. No, not just that. <clears throat> More poles have been added between them. People are tied to them. Only, it isn't just people that a black maw with sharp teeth appear, blocking the view. Then the screen is filled with static. That's the last of, I'm on my feet. Rewind it. <clears throat> the man types and the image move backward. Stop. Zoom. On the left. More typing. The image resolves itself. Two poles. One a street lamp, the other a large metal beam planted there by someone strong. Yes, the colonel says. That's her. They caught her and strung her up for everyone to see. We don't know why they did that, but at least we know she's alive. I glance at who she means. Amanda is tied to the street lamp. I don't care about her. I'm looking at the form tied to the metal beam, arms stretched over his head. His head... His head hangs low. His, hangs, his head hangs low. His legs are under him, but I can tell they barely support his weight. His skin hangs loosely on his for, on him. His form elongated as if he, he is being pulled from both ends. I can feel in my body how weak he is. Something about his posture resonates with me as if I know how that feels. But that isn't all. I look at him and I know him. He looks nothing like the last time I saw him. There is no way I can know this. I'm in. The demon tied to that beam is claws in the dark. I am certain of it. And that concludes chapter 9 of Trustless Shadows. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next chapter is going to be up, subscribe. Hit the bell. If you want to read this book, as well as the other two in the trilogy, they are available on Kindle Unlimited. If you are looking for a different way to support me, that is on my Patreon, where <clears throat> you can get access to basically everything I've written. And if you are looking to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. The links are in the notes, and with that, I shall wish you a good day.